Texas A&M football. Heading into the 2022 college football season, they had some very high expectations. To be a top team in college football, to be one of the best teams in the SEC, they were even seen as the number six team in the AP poll heading into the 2022 college football campaign. With all these expectations and coming off the number one recruiting class all time in the 2022 recruiting class, this was going to have to be a great season for the Aggies or it was going to be a disappointment. Fast forward to current day, the Aggies have been a disappointing team in 2022. They currently sit in at 3-4, and four, and their SEC record sits in at 1-3. and three. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what's going on with Texas A&M football. Before I move on, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get into it. To start this video off, I'm going to be talking briefly about Texas A&M football in 2021. A&M went 8 and 4 in the 21 campaign, finishing 4 and 4 in SEC play. The offense averaged 29 points a game, which is 56 in the nation, and the defense roughly gave up 16 points per game, which ranked 3rd on the FBS level. That defense was a good defense. When looking at the entire season as a whole for Texas A&M and all their losses that they had, the biggest margin that they lost by was to Ole Miss and Arkansas, which are both two top 25 teams, and the margin they lost by was only 10 points. The other two games they lost that season in Mississippi State and LSU, Mississippi State was a four-point loss, and LSU was a three-point loss. And of course, the biggest storyline with Texas A&M in this entire season was the fact that they had the number one recruiting class in 2022. Not only that, that was the highest rated recruiting class of all time. To put in perspective how crazy the 22 recruiting class was for Texas A&M, they landed 8 5 stars, 21 4 stars, and 2 3 stars. 18 of their 32 commits that they landed in that single recruiting cycle were top 100 players in the country according to the 24 7 sports composite rankings. Of course, landing the number one recruiting class all time is going to draw a lot of eyes on your team. And in AM's case, it did bring a lot of hate. There's already a lot of people that do not like Texas AM in general, and knowing that they landed the number one recruiting class in the first year of really the NIL era with college football recruiting. They landed the number one class despite being an 8 and 4 team and not having at least a 10 win season since the 2011 college football season in which they went 11 and 2. With all this gained attention of landing the number one class in history of the college football recruiting rankings since they started recording them and of course beating Alabama in 2021 you're going to have some lofty expectations heading into 2022, no matter how you performed in 2021. In Texas A&M heading into the 2022 season, people expected them to be a top SEC team, and they were even ranked number 6 in the AP preseason poll. Now, we can talk about the current 2022 season up to this point. Texas A&M, as of the recording of this video, is currently 3-4. and four. 1-3 and three in conference play. Their offense, in scoring-wise, ranks 109th on the FBS level, averaging nearly 22 points a game, and their defense is still a pretty good defense, only allowing 20, which ranks number 25 in the nation. In regards to total offense and total defense rankings, the offense is near the bottom tier of college football, ranked in at number 108, and the defense is still pretty good as they rank number 45. The remaining 2022 schedule that Texas A&M has isn't necessarily the easiest schedule for a team that is 3-4 and four and is not playing their best football. They have to play a top 25 Ole Miss team, a decent Florida team that is going to challenge you no matter who you are. Auburn at Auburn. I understand that Auburn's not having the best season, and they're overall not the best team. But it is still at Auburn, and they could give you a little bit of a fit here and there in a game if you're not going to play your best. UMass, yeah, they're going to beat UMass more than likely, or at least you'd hope so. 
and their final game of the season, a current top 25 team in LSU that is playing some good football. The season itself is disappointing for expectation standards for Texas A&M being 3-4 and four, and currently 1-3 and three in SEC play. And looking at the remaining schedule that I just talked about, you have to win at least three games to be a bowl-eligible team at 6-6. Six and six. They can only afford two more losses, and they must win three more games. I'm confident, really confident, that they can beat Massachusetts and win one of those games to at least have a four-win season. But the rest are not going to be guaranteed. Do I think they can beat Auburn? Yes. But the other ones, to me, are going to be a lot harder to decide, as they're not going to be the easiest games having to play against Ole Miss, Florida, and LSU. I understand that overall they've already missed out on the expectations they had for their season heading in, but there is still time to salvage it to an extent. If you win out, you're 8-4. and four. But if you miss a bowl game entirely, it is an utter embarrassment. And of course, under all of this craziness that has been happening for Texas A&M football in 2022, there's been a lot of rumors coming up here and there, a lot especially after they've lost to South Carolina, about how the locker room is divided. A lot of players are going to be entering the portal, and a number of highly coveted players from that number one ranked 22 recruiting class that are already trying to quit the team. Now, I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff in today's video, as at the end of the day, rumors are just rumors. It doesn't mean any of them are true, and there's a good chance that all of them could be false. However, there is one big thing that did happen for Texas A&M in the same week. That big event that happened in the same week happened in the South Carolina locker room that led to the indefinite suspension of three true freshmen, all top 75 players in the 2022 recruiting class, those being Denver Harris, P.J. Williams, and Chris Marshall. Texas A&M season is already not going the way that they want, being 3-4 and four and 1-3 and three in conference play, and this locker room incident just makes the season seem even worse as you have to th suspend three players indefinitely for the rest of the 22 season because they did something dumb in the locker room. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to do stuff in the locker room against team rules in general, and you're not supposed to break team rules at all, even off the field, but doing it in the locker room and getting caught is the last thing that you want to have happen. To close off this video, I want to share my thoughts on Texas A&M football and their season to this point and why they're struggling they, the way they are. Now, I'm not going to speculate and say it's a culture problem or even locker room problem at that, as I really don't want to be the guy to talk about rumors or to really even speculate at all. Instead, I'm going to take my viewpoint on the team and how I've seen it in some of the games they've played in 2022. The defense, in my honest opinion, has been a defense I believe has been pretty good, and it's one that you should be able to win with as a lot of guys have shown up and they've been playing pretty well. But the offense is complete opposite of that. The offense has not been good at all, and it's all with the play calling and the quarterback issue. None of the quarterbacks this season for Texas A&M have been impressive. They've thrown nine touchdowns in seven games and have thrown a total of six interceptions. They've completed 58% of their passes and are averaging 221 passing yards on the season. Overall, quarterback play isn't well. And of course, I'm not going to put 100% of the blame on the quarterbacks. A lot of the play calling hasn't been great as well either, which ultimately does affect quarterback play. All in all, I think the main reason why Texas A&M is being disappointing this season is because of a lack of consistent play at the quarterback position. They have the defense. The defense can win them games in some ways. However, you also have to have an offense, especially in the SEC. Well, guys, if you made this far in the video, drop something down in the comment section below what videos you want to see next or in the near future. And before you head out, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. B. Ellie, out.